Let me thank uh, my colleague uh, for yielding, and let me start by also thanking him and the members of the uh, Government Reform uh, Committee for their work on this bill. I also want to thank uh, our 50 co-sponsors and all the members on both sides of the aisle who are standing with us today. I also appreciate the efforts of uh, our colleagues in the Senate, uh, particularly Senator Joe Lieberman, uh, who are working on similar legislation. Uh, today, uh, the House will have the opportunity to do something special for the future of our country. And I think uh, just about every member would agree uh, that uh, we've got to, to do everything we can to help our education system. Americans are concerned that their children won't, know, won't be able uh, to have the same blessings that they've had. And if we want to protect the American dream, uh, there's no substitute uh, for a quality education. You know, my view has always been that education reform starts with giving children a way out of our most underachieving public schools. Of course, that doesn't mean that we abandon those schools. It means we take some of the pressure off of them while uh, they work to turn themselves around. Uh, so we came together here about seven years ago and said, let's try something different. Instead of just throwing money at the problem, uh, let's empower parents from lower income families to choose the schools that are best for them. We wouldn't deny any school money that they'd already been receiving. We'd be injecting freedom and competition into a system uh, that's caught up in the status quo. And we had a strong bipartisan coalition, including Anthony Williams, who was the mayor here at the time, uh, Dick Army, who uh, for years led this fight in the House, paving the way for this program, uh, he and I started working together on school choice in the early 90s uh, when we served on the Education and Labor Committee together. We said, let's give the kids in our capital city a real chance at success and a real shot at the American dream that they don't have. And we thought to ourselves, what do we have to be afraid of? Well, as it turned out, there was nothing that we needed to be afraid of. Thousands of families have taken advantage of the D.C. Opportunity Scholarship Program. And there is strong evidence that it's both effective and cost-effective. And unfortunately, the education establishment in our country uh, sees this Opportunity Scholarship Program as a threat. In reality, uh, this is an opportunity to raise the bar, because competition makes everybody better. I think if you look uh, beyond the talking points and focus on the facts, uh, you'll find that the D.C. program provides a model that can work in other communities uh, around our nation. Now, I think all of you know that this issue is important to me. But I'll tell you this, this is not about me. I'm proud to say that I've supported the Opportunity Scholarship Program uh, from the get-go. Uh, but I'm even more proud of the fact that I had nothing uh, to do with its success. For that, we can thank uh, the students and parents uh, who have become more than the program's beneficiaries. Uh, they are its greatest ambassadors. In our recent days, I've received letters from many of them asking Congress to do the right thing. And I'll be submitting some of those for the record. You see, they know what it was like before. They remember living just blocks from great schools, but feeling miles away from them. And all they did was ask us to have a chance uh, to have the same kind of education that kids down the street were getting. There's no controversial idea here. It's the American way. So if we're serious about bipartisan education reform, we should start by saving this successful bipartisan program that has helped so many underprivileged children here in D.C. get a chance at a quality education. And I urge the House to support and save this important program. 